more, which we're probably pretty close to that now, of some of the leadership of this church are going to go anyway. And uh, we can make a group booking. You can be a part of that, and it'll make it a cheaper, cheaper rate for you to come to INC Conference, which is 50 years of the establishment of Christian Outreach Centre in this great nation of Australia. And uh, it'll be a powerful, powerful couple of days there. So I trust you'd look into that. Next Sunday, we're going to say next Sunday. Next Sunday also, we have a guest here. This has happened because I'm in a relationship with a church at Toowoomba, and the pastor there has had a lady, a woman, uh, come out from America and uh, has been ministering around. And it's Yana, you say Yana, Yana Pauls, and she's from the River Church, Tampa Bay, Florida. And she'll be here, Evangelist Yana, and she's been ministering in Toowoomba of recent weeks, and um, she's available. She's coming to here next Sunday. So she'll here, be here for the AM service, and we'll do an extra service for 6 p.m. And uh, just powerful woman of God come out from um, Tampa, Florida, and from the River Church, and uh, she's going to come and minister to us here next Sunday. So don't miss that Sunday morning. Bring some friends. Bring some uh, unsaved family. A powerful anointing to see the lost one for Jesus Christ is one of the giftings on her life as she brings us greetings from the River Church, Tampa Bay, Florida. Isn't that exciting? It's so very good to have such a blessedness come around our lives. This morning, really quickly today, if you take your Bibles, we've had a, who's had a feast already? <laughs> it seems like it's been an overflow already. I'm like, man, I'm full of what God's been saying, full of His presence and full of what He's doing. But just quickly this morning, I want to just share a couple more thoughts, building on the last time I was here ministering, a couple of thoughts to us today to bring uh, 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 thoughts about the God kind of life. Everyone say the God kind of life. It's already come up today as Paul so graciously and eloquently said, it seems like a theme happens in songs and worship and prophetic words and testimonies and uh, it builds and builds and builds as God lead us, leads us this way. I'm just going to turn quickly as I lead into this. We'll come to our, our main text in a moment. I want to start with this verse, Romans chapter 1. Uh, Romans 1 verses 16 and 17. And it says this in the TPT translation. It says Romans 16 verse, sorry, Romans 1 verses 16 and 17. It says, I refuse to be ashamed of the wonderful message of God's liberating power unleashed in us through Christ. For I am thrilled to preach that everyone who believes is saved the Jew first and then people everywhere. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? So everybody's included today. Those here in the building, those online today, we welcome you also. Trust you enjoying the service this morning. It's for everybody everywhere. It says verse 17, This gospel unveils a continual revelation of God's righteousness or God setting things right, a perfect righteousness given to us when we believe. It moves us from receiving life, everyone say life, life through faith to the power of living by faith. Hallelujah. This is what the scripture means when it says we are right with God through life giving faith. And my focal point this morning, this verse is that thank God we are saved through faith. Amen. So it's the faith of the knowledge of God's word that brings us to the place of salvation. Paul talked about it, receiving Christ. If he was to leave the planet, he knows that he's good to go. But you know what? There's a power of living by faith. And I want the church, Harvest Point Church family, not to just have a ticket, as Paul so eloquently said before, to heaven if something goes amiss or it's time to go. But we want to have a people who, who know the victory of, of, the, of, of a faith life in Jesus Christ, what it means to the power of living by faith. And I spoke about this in Kununurra last Sunday, and that is that across the globe, in a sense, sometimes there's been a shift away from a life of faith to a life of process or a life of doing, um, uh, what am I talking about? Like, you know, um, sequences of learning, so to speak. Processes, and you know, processes are okay, but when they replace faith or the power of living by faith, we've put the wrong horse before the cart, if that makes sense today. And so I want to focus Harvest Point Church on, it's like this internal 
combustion that's on the inside of us that causes an energy to come and it's not our own energy we're talking about the very life of Christ today which comes and is deposited on the inside of us so there's a verse here I'll read to you another verse John 6 63 speaks this word it says in brief his words are spirit pneuma and they are life hallelujah someone say his words are life to me today The TPT translation says this, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives life. That which is of the natural realm is of no help. Did you hear me? Ah, you know what? Most times we sometimes can get caught up and we live our whole life impacted and led by the natural realm. Paul gave the example of the testimony, how the conflict happens to live by faith or live by the, the, uh, the, the report that comes to your life or what, what the society is saying about how life should look. I want us to be a people today that we take the Holy Spirit as the one who gives life and that which is of the natural realm is actually of no help, this Bible, this translation says. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. And reads on, but there are still some of you who won't believe this. Oh, we don't want to hear that, but do we? But who knows, that's a challenge. And my heart today is to bring everybody, sweep you all up and say, we're going to be on the journey today, we continue this way, to be a people who live by the Spirit and who operate in the life of God. Hallelujah. To live a victorious life to the glory of Jesus Christ. In the Son is life. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I want to come back to these other verses here in 1 John. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 11. It says this in the Amplified Classic. And this is the testimony, the evidence that God gave us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. He who possesses the Son has that life. Has this life, in other words, you know what I, I heard a preacher once say, it's like control substance, this life. You can't get it just anywhere. The verse before I read to you says that the things of the natural or earthly realm really are no particular use when it comes to this life. It's a control substance and you get it from one source through relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, and the power of the Holy Ghost to your life. And it reads on, He who does not possess the Son of God does not have that life or this life. The TPT says, this is a true testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life, someone say this life, has its source in His Son. Whoever has the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not have the Son does not possess life. Whoa, hallelujah. And you know what, today, if you're here this morning and you've never received Jesus Christ or possessed, as the Word says, the Son of God, you can receive Him today. Amen? No one is exempt this morning. This is open invitation to everybody to receive the Son of the living God and partake of His life. Hallelujah. And it brings life. I read a translation a little while ago. The Fenton translation says this, And this is the evidence that God has granted to us life. And the same life that exists in His Son. Who's the Son? Someone shout it out. Jesus. The possessor of the Son, Jesus, possesses that life. Whoever does not possess the Son of God does not possess that life. The word life here, and it's incorporated in the word called eternal life, is the word zoe. The Greek word zoe, which means life. It's spiritual life. It's the same life that's in God. Isn't this wonderful? And I don't know, but for me, it's like, I don't know whether I've got a small mind or a little brain at times, but this is hard to comprehend. When you think about God Almighty, the creator of the universe, the God who put the whole thing together, who created you and I, the life that God carried, that He put, we see, no one has actually seen God, but we said when we see the Son, His Son Jesus, we've seen the Father and the same life that was in God, God life is in the Son, Jesus Christ. And we see the Son, we see the life that He carried is now the same life that is in you and I as born again men and women of God. 
So I'm, I'm building this picture again this morning because we've got to break off the limitations and the constrictions that want to stop us. I'm talking to Pastor Mark too. that want to limit us from seeing the plan and the, and the power and the enormity of what God can do through the life of any believer today who will become aware of the life of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm talking about, I, I, know, I, know I spoke to a pastor this week as he was facing a calamity within the life of his church members there. And we're talking about the, the possibilities or the scenarios of this or that. And I said, you know what? As I study the life of Jesus Christ, everywhere Jesus went, he was never promoting death. He was never acknowledging or agreeing with sickness or disease. He was never ever agreeing with and tolerating what the enemy or Satan was trying to put on people. It was the life of God that he brought. And I thought, well, so often, you know, our natural realm is like a report comes and we can choose like Paul said, and this is how it builds Paul. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? This is how bills is that we can say, okay, that can be what they diagnose there. But the truth is the life of God the God kind of life, the same life that Jesus Christ carried, now lives and has been deposited in me through the Holy Spirit. Therefore, sickness and the, and the taint of sin or any other, any other devilish thing has no right or authority to stay in my body because I have the life of God in me. Amen. And I say that, you know, even to the way I think or the attitudes of my mind, sometimes their minds, and you know, if you like, we all know this probably, it's not, it's a truth or it's factual out there, is that mental anguish or mental problems are one of the greatest dirge on society today. We've got the smartest smarts of all things. We've got the most best of communication. We've got all things we want, wherever we want it. But there's such a dirge of a problem to the thinking of people's minds that how now not only does it affect my physical body, it affects my mind and my mental capacity. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians uh, 3 verse 16 or 2 16, it says, I have the mind of Christ. Or is it 1 Corinthians? Someone will correct me in a moment. <laughs> Someone shall I have the life of God. And I don't know about you, but do you ever wake up some days on a Monday or a Thursday and say, oh, what day is it today? And I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not de denying our humanity, but I'm saying in, in, a, in amongst our humanity, there has to be an acknowledgement or awareness of the spirit life of God as otherwise we're just trudging through life and living defeated rather than taking the life of God and saying, that's mine and it lives in me. As I become aware of it today, that is flowing through my system and rejuvenating my life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 I'm talking about the very life of God on the inside of us. Amen. You know, and when we think about the life and that the text we talked about calls it eternal life. Hallelujah. The, the, it's not just about the length of life. It's also about the quality of life. That's what the Greek word really means. It's Zoe life. It's the quality, not just the length depicting eternal life. Hallelujah. It's reigning life. It's victorious life. Hallelujah. It's love life to the glory of God. Praise His name. Amen. Someone said, I had the life of God. I had the life of God. Hallelujah. There's an injection of life into us. Amen. And it goes on forever. Barclay says, not simply life that goes on forever. It is the injection into this time realm, something from God realm. It's the very life of God. It's spiritual substance and it comes into your spirit and joins to your spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 17 is the, says that the one who joins himself to the Lord is mingled into one spirit with him. Hallelujah. Woo! Someone said, I have the life of God. Look, look, we're running out of time today. Let me just go to a story quickly. Do you know what? Back on the property in Charleville, we had sheep first of all, and we had dogs to work the sheep, right? To help the aid of mustering. Then we shifted to cattle, and we had the same dogs, and we added a few extra as well. But the dogs of breeding, which we used mainly, were Kelpies. Predominantly. And I want to say this today that you know what? In the Kelpie dog, there's a inherent or there's a, there's a instinct 
that's in them as a breed of dog. The moment you put some animals there in front of them, they're there to the front of those animals to stop them going away from you. Did you know that? Everyone say it's instinct. It's instinct. And so we used to have Kelpies predominantly. And, you know, it didn't take long, a bit of a, you know, a whistle here and a whistle there and a move the arm that way. And they'd know that you're gonna, they've got to go that way around the mob. And they had instinct to go to the front. Who knows it's a good thing when you're on a motorbike and there's trees and logs and timber in your road. You need a little snappy little fast dog that can skip around the front and turn the sheep or turn the cattle around and hold them up till old slow farmer Mark, not farmer Greggy, Farmer Mark catches a mob up. It's instinct in them to go to the lead. So we used to have those sorts of dogs all the time to go the lead. But you know what? That also needs that arm movement or a whistle or a bit of training to bring out what's instinct in them to be useful for that operation of mustering cattle or sheep. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know what? When the life of God, the instinct of God comes and lives in a person, who knows it still needs developing in our lives. And that's what happens with us. So I just want to encourage you that today it's about becoming aware of the instinct of God that's been deposited in you that will cause God life to flow through you and out of you and upon you that everywhere you go, you don't bring death, but you bring life. Hallelujah. Is that making sense this morning? Yeah, it's, someone shout, it's instinct. It's in me, it's who I am. And what we're doing is we're acknowledging who we are in the things of God today. And you know what, there's so much I said to the pastor in Kananara, because, uh, you know, they, they, they think when you uh, move around a little bit and the thing, they say, well, you know, pastors, leaders or ministers, they know everything. And I said, not this boy. I said, I don't know much at all. And there's many things that I don't know about. Some of the guys went to Ken Ham and Answers in Genesis in Brisbane the other week. You know, that man is phenomenal. Amazing revelation and truth. Uh, there's things I don't know about. I've got to go and find the information. There's things that Pastor Mark doesn't know. But I said to the pastor in Kananara, but the things that I do know, I know. Yeah. And that's what's working in my life because that instinct has been honed and trained for those particular reasons to work in my life and produce an anointing and produce a grace and produce a victory in my life to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And so for you, you've got different anointings and give things and you've got different ways of learning. And so we honour and respect that today. Hallelujah. But you've got to know what you know to the grace of God. But to me, these things are, are, are kind of like, you say, well, it's basic. Well, we need the basic, don't we? I've seen football teams train on the fields, you know what? And they do the same thing week after week after week. They throw the ball and pass the ball and kick the ball and they pass the ball and do it the next week and the next week and the next week. And they do the same thing over and over and over again. We've lost that somewhat in the church in Christendom, haven't we? Is that right? That the old school things of let's, who wants to learn a memory verse? Who wants to learn a passage of Scripture and not just know it so you know it, but have it locked in down on the inside of you so that you know how this thing works to the glory of God. And it becomes, it's instinct, but it becomes a flowing out of your life because you know what you know to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I want you to know today that you have the very life, the God kind of life has been deposited inside of you. It is instinct in you it's inherent now and becoming aware of what that looks like will cause you to live a life of victory in the realm of this nature amen hallelujah someone say praise the lord it's the life of god i learned this and you've probably all heard this story the life of god will flow through you and in you amen no longer can satan dominate you hallelujah no longer can sin dominate. No longer can sickness dominate. No longer can poverty dominate you because the life of God lives on the inside of you to the glory of Jesus Christ. I was reminded, we've heard this story recently about who's heard of the man, the great John G. Lake. Yeah, John G. Lake. Well, back in whatever era it was, I won't quote the era because I'll probably get it wrong. But John G. Lake was involved and around when the bubonic plague was around. And people were dying everywhere and they would, they would 
very disgusting. They have, you know, virus and saliva and things coming out of their mouth. And the story goes that John G. Lake, they said, well, why aren't you nervous? Why aren't you afraid of this bubonic plague? He said, because I have the life of God living inside of me. And they said, well, look, you know, you've got to be more careful, John. He said, no, no, get some of that viral stuff there and put it upon my hand and put my hand under the microscope and you watch what happens. And he, they put some of the saliva from a dead person that died from the bubonic plague on John G. Lake, stuck it under a microscope and instantly those cells died and stopped to move. Hallelujah. I'm saying that because that's available to everybody who will have an acknowledgement and faith of we have and carry the life of God inside of me. How could Jesus Christ Himself move around amongst leprous people, a very contagious disease of the day, and He was touching those people, He was reaching out to them. Come on, I want you to, we the church, to grab a hold of the truth. We cannot be afraid of anything out there as we become aware, more aware of the God kind of life, the same life God had He gave to Christ, which He gave to His Son Jesus Christ, and now lives in us, amen, so we can go places and do things that no other Others can do, not because of our own volition, but because of the very life of God that's been in, 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 in what's the instinct on the inside of us, implanted inside of us. Hallelujah. This, 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 this reduces fear. It reduces trauma. It reduces stress life because we can go places and do things that other people cannot do to the glory and to the honour of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen that we can be a witness for Him wherever we go to the praise and the glory of His name. Someone say, I had the life of God. I had the life of God. It's instinct in me. Hallelujah. I looked up the word instinct. It means it's an inborn pattern of behaviour that is characteristic of a species. Hallelujah. We're talking about the character of God inside of us. Instinct is a powerful motivational impulse or it's an innate capability or aptitude. Hallelujah. Someone say, I have not only the life of God, I have the mind of Christ today. Let me read you one more verse and I'll close with a couple of points today. Ephesians 2 verses 4 to 6. I love this passage of Scripture. It says, But God so rich is He in mercy from the Amplified Classic because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which He loved us. Someone say, He loves us. Hallelujah. Even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, He, Christ, made us alive. Someone say, I'll be made alive. The word alive is the same Greek word there. Zoe, the life of God. Someone say, He's made me alive. He's made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. This Amplified Classic says, He gave us the very life of Christ Himself, the same new life with which He quickened Him. Hallelujah. For it is by grace, His favour and mercy, which you did not deserve, that you are saved, delivered from judgment and made partakers of Christ's salvation. Hallelujah. And He has raised us up. Someone say, He's raised me up. He's raised me up together with Him and made us sit down together, given us joint sitting with Him in, heavenly, in a heavenly Sophia by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. I don't know about this, but this is like someone says, you can get high on this stuff. Ha <laughs> ha. I don't say that to be crude or rude, but you know what I'm saying? It's like it produces something of which we sung about today, the joy of the Lord. It does something on the inside of you, amen, to realise it's a reigning in life life, amen. Someone say it's a royal life. It's an overcoming life, hallelujah. You know what you've done? You've left dead country to enter into life country. Praise His name. We have the victory, amen. I said the other day, just quickly in closing this morning, to wrap this up, there's so many other verses we can look at. But we looked at what this life is and what it will do. Number one, it will cause your spirit to come alive in Jesus Christ. Someone say the life of God. 
as the music team come this morning, it causes your spirit. Someone said, what were the other points? And I'm going to go through them again this morning. Number one, it causes your spirit to come alive. It develops your spirit. And as you're renewed, you become more aware of the life of God in your spirit. Hallelujah. So number one, it causes your spirit to come alive and develops your spirit. Number two, it increases your intellect. Tell the person beside you, I'm way smarter now. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 16 is what I was trying to quote before. It says, you have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Number three, someone say number three. The life of God enhances my personality. Yeah, you know what it does? It frees you from comparison and competition. Hallelujah. With other people. Someone say, I'm free of comparison and competition with other people. You know, that's easy to say. It's harder to live it on Tuesday. Have you found that sometimes? You know what I'm saying? You look at somebody else and you go, oh man, they're amazing, aren't they? <laughs> or I wish that person could be my friend. <laughs> yeah. Someone say it enhances your personality. It frees me from comparison and competition. I wrote this down. I said it last time. Some people are self-conscious. Some people, sadly, are too devil-conscious. Some people are people conscious and some are sadly unconscious. <laughs> but we need to be God conscious. Someone say, I'm God conscious today. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise His name. And lastly, number four, someone said, what's the fourth one? I heard those people here today. Number four, you may be watching online. Number four, it quickens my mortal body. The life of God quickens and makes alive my mortal body. It's like life also flows in my bones, in my organs, in my flesh, in my cells. We can see from that farmer, Pastor Greggy, hallelujah, you can see the transformation that's happening as the life of God is quickening and making alive His mortal body. And you know what? With all seriousness and with all compassion, I, I, my heart reaches out to every person here today in this room or those watching online who are or have been struggling with physical issues. I, t I take this word today with, with grace. I take it with respect. I hold it with honour today and say by the power of the living God, I perceive today that the life of God is touching and quickening your mortal body in Jesus' name. Paul testified this morning of the quickening power of the life of God to turn a report around. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm talking to people with pain today, anguish in their body or their bones or muscles or even in your soul today. I'm talking about the very life of God today will quicken and make you alive in Jesus' name. Someone say, it's making me alive today. It's driving out sickness and disease. I have the life of God on the inside of me. Someone say it together. I have the life of God on the inside of me. As we stand this morning, let's stand to our feet today. Hallelujah. Would you like to stand with me this morning? Someone say it again. I have the life of God living on the inside of me. I pray today, some of you could probably speak or talk about this even more eloquent than I can, but I pray that you grab the truth today on the inside of you by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that this truth becomes a reality for your life today. Father, I pray today for every listening ear, every heart that's open today. Lord, that I'm not just speaking mere words of Mark, but I'm speaking words of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're speaking about spirit truths today. These are our new creation realities. These are, as born again believers today, this is who we are in Jesus Christ today. We do have and we carry the inheritance, the instinct of the life of God on the inside. So Father God, we are making ourselves aware this morning of the power that's available, making ourselves aware today of the authority that's available. In effect, we're training ourselves this morning. We're training our souls to adhere to and be reminded of in this very life. Because I read straight up this morning, first up, that this life is lived by faith. Amen. It's lived by faith in the Son of God who loved us and He gave Himself for us. Father, I thank You for an overcoming church today. I thank You for a victorious people today. I thank You, Lord, for a people today who are alive today with the very life of God on the inside of them this day in Jesus' wonderful name.
with every head bowed, every eye closed this morning. Just hold on, hold on. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Perhaps you're here and watching online today and you've never ever received Jesus Christ. You've never acknowledged His Lordship. You've never acknowledged His Sonship, His Kingship to come and rule and reign in your life today. The invitation is being extended to you today, those present and those watching online, both here or perhaps later on. That the invitation today to receive God life is available for every person. It does mean that you're snatched away from the clutches of the devil. You're snatched away from the, from the pitfall of being forever separated from the living God, loving God today. The invitations given to all mankind, they receive Him and receive His life. Receive His forgiveness as you turn your heart, you turn your attention towards the living God and say, Lord, thank You for Your forgiveness this morning. I acknowledge my sinful, fallen state. I come and stand before, I present myself, my heart, before a loving Father, the living God, who is able to rescue me and completely save me from myself firstly and from the destruction that awaits us if we don't turn to Him. Father, we thank You for hearts and lives today that have been arrested already in this house, lives that have been transformed and changed by the power of the Holy Spirit today. Father, we thank You for those that will continue to receive Christ and acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Father God, thank You that as they do so, the very life of God will become inherent in their lives. In Jesus' Name. A deposit by the Spirit of God, simply by saying, I believe in my heart and I confess and speak with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, that He is who He says He is, that He came, was born as a babe, came, grew into a man and received the calling of God Almighty and was obedient to that call. He was crucified on a cruel cross to pay the penalty for my sin to bear the brunt of my shame and to pay the guilt that was on, upon my life. Father God, today we receive the life of God which alleviates a person from the sin nature, the stain of sin, the judgment to come as they respond to the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank You that's unavailable, that's on offer here today as we stand today as people in honour of Jesus Christ the sacrifice, the Lamb of God who was slain even before the foundation of the earth it was locked in thank you for the great love today the death that He endured in my place as me I've simply put my trust in Him today and have been relieved of that sin nature and I've received the very life of God today Father, we thank You for what it produces in the life of a believer. I'm just wondering if there's someone here this morning in this gathering. You say, Pastor Mark, I've never acknowledged God in this way. I've never received of His Son, Jesus Christ. I've never put my faith and my trust in Him, in the accomplishment of His work on the cross, death, burial, and resurrection.